This is episode 32 of the Arts Academy podcast with Victor Bernardo and Roxy Hayes. How to get an SBA loan as an artist with special guest Leslie Ware. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the New York Alt Arts Academy podcast. Yay. All right. I am Dean Victor Varnado. I'm joined by my deputy editor, right Roxy Hayes, and uh, Leslie Ware. She's going Ooh. by Leslie W today because she got so tired she couldn't write out <laughs> the full W-A-R-E. Uh, so today's class uh, is a class that I think everyone should have. And it is uh, about how to get a loan from the Small Business Association if you are an artist or a gig worker or an independent contractor. Right now, the Small Business Association is uh, giving out loans to people. Uh, I will tell you as much I know about the criteria and how to get your loan. And I'm also going to take you through the process of filling out the loan uh, application step by step. Because I know a lot of people think that they, they hear the Small Business Association and they're like, I don't even know how to tackle that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. Uh, and if you are watching this in video, uh, we you can follow along. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can actually go to the website and follow along step by step because I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Uh, the website, by the way, is sba.gov. Uh, the Small Business Association. So let us uh, let me tell you, first of all, that you can get loans up to $2 million. I'm sure a lot of you are not going to go for $2 million. You shouldn't, as a matter of fact, if you're <laughs> a independent gig worker. Uh, because if your loan is above $25,000, then they ask you to have collateral. They're going to be asking for collateral for any loans that are above $25,000. So most people who are gig workers are going to ask for loans that are $25,000 or less. Also, the loans are really easy to pay back. Uh, if you get a $25,000 loan, the loan is actually be, has, has to be paid back over three years, okay? Actually, four years because the payments don't start until uh, one year after you get the loan then you pay back the loan over the next three years monthly. But at $25,000 over three years comes out to less than $150 a month to pay back a loan. Uh, so, and the, uh, the interest rate is a little more than 3%, which is an amazing interest rate. So a three year loan at 3% is great. I'm telling you, it's really, really good. So uh, here's how you get that loan. All right, now the way that I found out about this initially was I was looking for information about how uh, these loans were being doled out and I came across a Forbes article, uh, which basically the Forbes article uh, said, the title of the article is how to get $1,000 if you're a freelancer, gig worker, or independent contractor. Uh, because previously the loans were set up so that they were giving out uh, grants as part of the loan. Like you would get a grant when you applied for the loan and then they would determine whether or not you're going to get the loan. However, now I don't know if the grants are still available, but the loans are. Uh, and so if you are a sole proprietorship with or without employees, an independent contractor, a freelancer or a gig worker, you can get one of these loans. Yes, if you are a clown at kids' birthday parties, if you're a stand-up comedian, if you're an artist, uh, you can get this loan. This is how. First of all, go to sba.gov, okay? And in sba.gov, uh, actually, why don't we back this up a little bit? So in sba.gov, uh, there is a there is a menu option called funding programs. You go to funding programs, in there is disaster assistance and then coronavirus COVID-19. You click on that and it takes you to the coronavirus COVID-19 SBA disaster assistance in response to the coronavirus. The type of loan that you're gonna be applying for is called the economic injury disaster loans. They do not ask you to give proof. 
that you had some sort of economic injury or disaster. They don't ask you to give proof. They just uh, ask you to apply for the loan and then they make a determination as to whether or not you get, get the loan. In general, the SBA says that if you have a, a um, credit score around 600 or more, you're going to get the loan. But if you have a credit score of less than 600, you can still get the loan. I'll tell you how to do that at the end. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, you scroll down on the page, uh, the, e the EIDL page, and you hit the button that says COVID-19 EIDL loan application, apply here. Uh, that takes you to the first of four pages that you have to fill out. Okay, so streamline process re requirements. It tells you things that you will need. Uh, you, you in general, you're supposed to have your tax returns and your bank records. Most people, it does not ask for that. But if you are on the border, it's good to have all of that information. All right. So when you go to that first page, uh, it's I actually filled out the first page so you can see it. First of all, it's going to ask you. Uh, what type of business you are. Uh, and then the one you want to choose uh, when it says under where it says choose one under eligible entity verification, applicant is an individual who operates under a sole proprietorship with or without employees or as an independent contractor, if that's you. If you have a sole proprietorship, great. If you are an independent contractor and you're just a person, that's fine too. You can just be a person and uh, still get this loan. All right. Uh, next section, it says review and check all of the following. If you do not check one of these boxes, you will not get the loan. Okay. And so the boxes are basically, are you engaged in any illegal activities? They're basically just asking you if you are a criminal or a spy or are you uh, super shady? They're asking you uh, whether or not you're going to be reliable. Uh, and if you do not check all these boxes, then you do not get the loan. So check the boxes uh, for all of those that are true. Uh, but if something's not true, uh, you know, maybe, you know, rethink how you're working your life. All right. Uh, then the next page uh, is a COVID-19 uh, loan application. First is the business information. Now, if you are if you have a business like a sole proprietorship and there's a name of that business, this is where you'd begin filling that out. But if you're not, if you're just a single person, you can just fill out your name. So you see here uh, under business legal name, fill out your name, I filled out Victor Varnado. Under trade name, I filled out Victor Varnado, okay? Uh, my social security number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go right ahead. Okay. I have a question. I'm sorry. Yes. You have a question? Do you know the difference between business name and trade name? Or you could just put the same one? Business name and trade trade name are exactly the same. The uh -huh. the business name business legal name is if you have a business like this, this is not geared toward independent contractors, even though you can apply, they didn't update it in any way to support uh -huh. them really. So your business name is just your name if you're an ind if you're a person. And then the trade name is again your name. But if you're like a business and you if you if you have a business name and you're also doing business under another name, you need to put those two names up there. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Trade name, business name. All right. Then social security number, organization type, you can choose what kind of organization you are. Uh if you are an independent contractor or just basically a lone gunman out there doing your art thing, independent contractor is what you want to choose. Uh, you can choose like C corporation, S corporation. If you're the type of business, you can also choose sole proprietorship. If you have a sole proprietorship, um, is this application a nonprofit organization? Yes or no, depending on what the answer is, is this application a franchise? Yes or no. Okay. Then, the next thing they're going to ask you is the gross resources uh, for 12 months prior to the date. This is basically what do you make? They want to know what you make. I put in $75,000 here, although that's not that's not close to true. 
uh, in this case, this is not my loan application, by the way. So I'm not like faking a loan application. Also, my social security number is not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, uh, but put in put in what you uh, what you've made in the past year, and then uh, the next one is cost of goods sold for the twelve months. That just means your operating cost. So say you are a children's party clown and you gotta buy balloons. You gotta buy uh, creepy makeup and a creepy wig, creepy shoes. I'm just assuming you're a creepy clown. Uh, if you were, if you have all of that, put those expenses down and add them up for the 12 months, just uh, so they can know and help determine your loan. The next sections uh, you can actually just leave blank. The ones you have to fill out will have a red mark next to them. And then when you fill them out correctly, they that red mark turns green. Uh, but the ones with no red mark next to them, uh, you don't have to fill out those unless they directly apply to your business. Next up is primary business address. Okay, cannot be a PO box. I live at 123 Poopy Fart Lane. Uh, so I put in 123 Poopy Fart Lane. Uh, if you if you have a PO box, then you need to either find an address that you can put in to actually to actually uh, fill this out. It doesn't have to be your home address. You can uh, you can also apply to. Um, or sorry, you can also have one of those places that accept packages for you and use that as an address. Uh, then. Put in your city, your state, your county, your zip. All of this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, your business email, whatever whatever email you work by. Then it's going to ask you the date the business was established. If you are an independent contractor, this doesn't have to be the day you were born. It just means put in the date that you started working as a freelancer. So if you started working 10 years ago as a freelancer, then you can put in that date. Current ownership since that can be the same date. Uh, so it's just basically when you started working as an independent contractor. If you have a business, put in the dates that apply to your business. Business activity. Now, uh, you can put in whatever you want under business activity. Uh, I suggest, because they have limited categories, either putting in, in entertainment services or communications if you're an artist, or if you can find something else that directly applies to what you do, you can put that in as well. Uh, then after you put in the business activity, it asks you for a more detailed version of that. Now, if you put in entertainment services, it actually doesn't have like if you're like, say, if you're like, say, a visual artist, there's actually no place for you to be a visual artist. So you can put in none of the below or you can put or you can put in maybe communication, which also you can put in none of the below. Don't put in adult entertainment. Word on the street is you put in adult entertainment, it goes to the bottom of the pile. Uh, so just don't put that. All right. Uh, number of employees, put in one if you're sole proprietorship, if you work alone, then you can put in one. Uh, by the way, if you're just tuning in right now, what we're doing is we're showing you if you're an artist or an independent contractor, you are eligible for a small business association loan. Uh, the EIDL loan, and you can actually go get it right now. In fact, if you if you're comfortable with filling out forms, I would suggest you go get it now. I had a friend who I told to do this this morning because the traffic is so low. They were actually approved uh, within three hours, and their loan is coming. Their money is coming in the next three business days. Oh wow! All right, uh, the the next page. Uh, is business owners information. Uh, so it's actually, this is actually pretty easy. If you're an individual owner, you just have to put in your first name, your last name, your phone number, the title that you have, uh, the ownership percent. If you are the only, uh, if you are a single or an independent contractor, your ownership percent is 100%. Uh, you put in your email, you would have to put in your social security number. Again, if you put in your social security number in the earlier page, you still have to put it in again uh, here because if you were a business, you would have put in your uh, tax ID number and then your personal social security number here as the owner. But uh, in this case, it, since you're an independent contractor, it's the same number. Uh, your birth date, that's when you were born. 
All right. Next up is whether or not you're a U.S. citizen, uh, your street address, uh, which is all self-explanatory. And at the very last page, they're just going to ask you a little bit more information and your bank information, your account and routing number. And after that, uh, you are done. Uh, you finish the pages, you sign up. Then in a few days, supposedly, I don't know how the time frame is going to work as the traffic goes up and down, but after a few days, supposedly, it will send you a message telling you whether or not you were um, approved for a loan offer or you were denied. Uh, if you're approved for a loan offer, it will send you to what they call a loan portal where you then have to look at the amount that the loan would be, what, what amount you're approved for. Then it will, it will tell you what the terms would be. So then you can choose whether or not you want to accept the terms. If you want to lower the amount that they may have offered you, like for instance, if you only need $5,000 and they're offering you $25,000, uh, don't be super greedy. Maybe just take the $5,000. Uh, it, it, because once you are to the phase of where they give you the loan offer, there's still one more phase to go where you could still be denied. Okay. Anyway, once you do the loan portal offer, you will have to verify your identification. Uh, once your identification is verified, then you can then you can choose uh, to move forward and accept their uh, their amount for the loan offer. Then it goes into final processing. Now, in the final processing uh, portion of your loan application, what's happening uh, is actually we don't even need this up here anymore. I'll tell you exactly what's up, everybody. So, in the final portion of the loan application, what's happening is that the uh, Small Business Administration is reaching out to lenders and asking who wants to take up this loan. We've already checked their credit. We think it's okay. And then we are also guaranteeing the loan. So uh, there's very little chance once you're in the processing phase that you're going to be denied but you can be denied because if somebody sees something in your application that they don't like and they say, let's dig a little deeper, it's possible that you could be still be denied. Uh, but chances are you won't be denied. Usually what will happen is after a day or two, they'll send you an email and say your loan was approved. And if your loan is approved, if your loan is approved, uh, then you will uh, be asked to sign paperwork electronically once you sign the paperwork, then supposedly within three business days, the money will be transferred to your account. And then you are on the hook, of, you're on the hook for that loan, but you don't have to pay it back until uh, one year after the loan started. And then you pay it back over uh, the uh, three years. So it's Sorry. actually, what? 30 years. I'm sorry. Yeah, over 30 years. Did I say three years? Yeah, it's 30 years. It's way better. So <laughs> then you pay it back over 30 years, uh, and then you should be good. So if you're an independent contractor, I highly recommend that you do this. I understand that a pandemic is happening. People are running out of money left and right, especially if they are artists. This is available to artists right now. Please go get it. Uh, let me tell you about what happens if you are denied. Now, if you are denied a loan, you can make an appeal. Uh, if you have a low credit score and you need to make an appeal, the best way to get the loan is to have someone co-sign for you. Now, the co-signing process is not that crazy because, because the loan is stretched out over 30 years, the payments are actually very, very small. So it's not a big risk for anybody if you can find someone who's willing to co-sign for you, then you can get that loan. Um, I did look and double check. Apparently the number is not 600, it's 570. Uh, so if you have 570, then you have a chance. It may, you may not get it. The higher your credit score is, the better. But uh, if you can't get the loan, you can appeal and then get someone to, to co-sign for you. Uh, also, 
another way to do it is with collateral. I don't actually know how the entire collateral process works. I'm sorry, but you will figure it out. Just go out there, ask questions. There's also a number that you can call where people will be on the line ready to help you. All right, so I'm hoping that if you're an artist and you need funding to keep going during this time, you're gonna go out there and do this and I hope it works for you. Please let me know if it does because I, I want people to be able to sustain themselves during uh, this pandemic. Anyway, that is it for how to apply for an SBA loan if you are a freelancer. Check us out at artsacademypodcast.com.